Good morning, third grade. Today is Monday and we're in our small book for reading class today. You should be on page 66. It looks like this. I'll write that on the board in case you forget. Page 66. Right, this week, our essential question, the main idea that we're focusing on, is how can problem solving lead to new ideas? We're talking all about inventions. All right, we're going to look at things that have been invented um, in the past, and we'll maybe even have some idea to think about some inventions of our own. If you look at this page, at the top it says, inventing something new. Almost every new invention starts with a problem and a new idea. Inventions make our lives better. Some inventions help us learn. Other inventions entertain us, right? Think about some inter an invention that helps you learn, right? The invention of a computer helps you learn. Can you imagine trying to do digital learning, virtual learning without a computer, right? That, that invention helps you learn. Some inventions are here to entertain us. Do you know basketball hasn't always existed? Somebody actually invented the sport of basketball. So that invention was for fun, right? It's for us to entertain you, for you to have fun playing that sport. Let's turn the page and look at our eight new vocabulary words today. Your vocabulary words, we've got eight of them. We're going to go over them now. We're going to read a story, and then when we're done, I'm going to get you started on your vocab worksheet for today. Today our vocab worksheet looks a little bit different. Um, than our normal vocab worksheet, and I'll tell you why at the end of this video. So make sure you keep watching so you know what to do on your assignment. First vocab word is design. You should be with me. Design's the first one here. Follow along with the sentences. Jake and Andy are helping to design a picture for the school's new wall. How would you design something new? Right? Like, for example, if we were in school right now, we would design, we would design our ceiling. We've got a galaxy theme going in here, and let me flip around and show you quick. And if you see, I've got some ceiling tiles, right, that we need to design. If we ever get back in school, when we get back in school, uh, you'll get the opportunity to design one of those ceiling tiles, right? To be able to take and put your own ideas and um, think about what should be on our ceiling tile instead of just this white, these white ceiling tiles here. Next, encouraged. My teacher encouraged us to eat some healthy snacks. Name something someone has encouraged you to do. So maybe Ms. Mack keeps encouraging me to watch all our videos. Or maybe my mom keeps encouraging me to get my homework done. Or whatever it may be. Next word, examine. The vet will examine my dog to make sure he's healthy. So that kind of means to look at closely, right? The vet's not just going to look from afar and be like, yeah, yeah, looks like Fluffy's good. You're good to go. No, he's going to examine it, right? He's going to look very closely, make sure his legs are looking right, make sure his ears look like they're working right, and all of those things. Next word, investigation. Tom did a careful investigation of the spider web in his yard. What can you do during an investigation? Think about something you might investigate. Like maybe, like maybe you heard something in your house. So you're going to investigate what just what made that noise. Or maybe you see something on the floor and you're going to investigate, hmm, I wonder what's that. All right? I'm at the top of this page now. Quality. Good quality helmet helps keep me safe. Why do people buy good quality things? Why do I buy something that's good quality? Because I know it's going to last, right? If I buy something that I know isn't going to last me very long, well, then that's not really a smart use of my money, right? I want to buy something that's quality that I know I can use time and time again. Next, simple. Walking my dog is a simple and easy way to have fun. What word in the sentence means the same as simple? Simple and, yeah, easy. Easy means the same thing. So if something's simple, it's easy, it's not complicated. Next word, solution. Marco found a solution that helped him get better grades. What does it mean to find a solution? Well, that's the, the answer to your problem. So if you find a solution, you're going to fix your problem so that you no longer have it. And then, substitutes. 
fruit and popcorn are healthful substitutes for candy. Right? What would be two more things that are healthy to eat? Maybe you're thinking about fruit, veggies, um, all sorts of different things that are good for you to eat instead of candy. Turn your page. We've next got Mary's Great Invention. All right. Read about how someone invented a problem, how someone solved a problem and invented something new. This is a pretty cool invention, so make sure you read along with me. Point fingers out, follow along with me. You, may, you might think that a ride in a bus or car is the same today as it was long ago. That isn't true. The first cars were not as fast. They were noisy. Cars didn't even have windshield wipers. When it rained, drivers rubbed their windshields with an onion. Can you imagine that? All right, it's time to get in the car. Go make sure you rub the windshield with onion. Onion. Eee, kind of gross, right? The oil from the onion would repel or keep off rain and sleet. So the oil and water don't mix. So when the water comes down and it's rain and the oil from the onions already on the windshield, the rain wouldn't stick so the person driving could see better. It wasn't the best solution, but there were no better substitutes, right? Our vocab word, I'm just right after that word, substitutes. Nothing else worked. Then a woman named Mary Anderson solved the problem. Our next heading started with snow. We're right here. Mary Anderson grew up in Alabama. In the winter of 1902, she went to New York City. It was a cold and windy day. The sky was a gray curtain. Snow was a white blanket on the ground. Mary was cold and wet. Because she wanted to warm up and get dry, she rode a streetcar. Back then, some streetcar windshields had two parts. They opened with a push. From her seat, Mary watched the snow and ice build up on the windshield drive, on the, on the windshield. The streetcar driver could not see. So he pushed open the windshield. This helped him see better. As a result, snow and ice blew in his face. Soon his nose and his ears were ice cubes. Can you imagine that? Driving along, you got your windshield. Oh, it's raining, I can't see. Whoop, I gotta open my windshield. Now I got all the snow and ice pelting at my face. Ooh, that doesn't sound very pleasant. Other cars kept stopping too. Sometimes the drivers hopped out. They wiped off their windshields. Then they got back in and drove. As a result, traffic moved slowly. Can you imagine that? I'm driving along. Oh, can't see. Stop, get out of my car. Wash off my windshield, get back in. All right, we're good to keep going. Now, I know you guys don't know how to drive yet, but if you were having to do that and you didn't have windshield wipers, holy cow, you'd have to be getting out of your car every 30 seconds. It would take forever to get where you needed to go. The next step, see this heading here that helps us see what's, helps us tell us what's coming next. Mary thought about this problem. How could drivers clean their windshields without stopping? Could they do it without opening their windshield? Back home in Alabama, Mary sketched her idea. Then she added some notes. She wanted to examine her solution to make sure that it worked. Next, Mary did her own investigation. She looked for facts about what drivers needed. She invented a windshield wiper that a driver could use from inside the car. Then she worked out a design or plan. On paper, Mary's invention looked simple. She hoped that drivers would find it easy to use. You can see this picture, this diagram down here, helps us see what that first windshield wiper was going to look like. It says the first windshield wiper was moved by a handle inside the car, right? So I got a handle inside the car that I move, and when I pull it, it moves the windshield wiper and cleans off my windshield. Page 74. Mary had a model built. It was made of quality wood, rubber, and metal. Soon, the model was ready to test. It was fitted on a windshield. The driver moved a handle inside the car. The handle caused the blade to move back and forth across the glass. It 
it worked. Mary's idea was a gem. She felt encouraged and was sure it would sell. Solving the problem. Mary's windshield wipers solved a problem, but it took many years before people used them. That's because most people did not own cars. By 1913, more people bought and drove cars. Those cars had windshield. Finally, windshield wipers began to sell. Driving became safer and easier because of Mary Anderson's idea. Safer to drive. Cars from long ago were different from cars we ride in today. Here are some more inventions that helped make driving safer. The first seat belts were used in 1885. Cars stopped at the first stop sign in 1915. Cars first used turn signals in 1938. Can you imagine that? There was a time where cars didn't have seat belts. How dangerous. There was another time when cars didn't have stop signs. How would they know when to stop? And they didn't have turn signals. So when I go to turn left, I turn on my, my blinker and then I'm turning left. They didn't used to have that. Look at all the amazing inventions that have helped solve problems to make driving safer. Now, let's look at those vocab words that we saw in our story. Go ahead and take out your vocab worksheet. We're going to go over some of these words. I would keep your book open to page 68. All right, let's get going on this. You should have this worksheet. Like I said, page 68 in your book is going to help you a ton with this. All right, today, instead of our normal vocab worksheet, you've got two choices. In my directions, I said you can draw a picture for each vocabulary word. If one of the words you're like, holy cow, I don't know a picture for this, or this is more difficult, it'd be easier just to write a sentence, that's fine too. So I'm going to change my direction at the top, write a picture, sorry, draw a picture. I said, or sentence. All right, if you want to do a sentence, that's fine. Okay, so maybe the first one for quality. Quality, when I think about something that I like that's, that's, that I want to be really high quality, maybe that's my winter jacket. And I want my winter jacket to be really high quality so it keeps me warm when I'm standing outside. So maybe I'm gonna draw my winter jacket. See how it looks nice and fluffy. I'm not a fantastic artist, but I'm just going to do my best. You can do the same. All right. And now remember, yours doesn't have to look, oh, it's got some fur right here. Oh, it kind of looks like a Santa Claus suit. That's okay. It's going to have a hood on it. Maybe some more fur up on the hood. All right. Now, I'm not quite sure Mrs. Mac is going to know what this is. So I'm just going to draw a picture to it and say winter coat. Your picture does not need to look like mine. If you pick something else that's high quality, that is fine. That is totally fine. All right. So you need to make sure that you've got a picture for every single one of these words. Now, if you're not quite sure on a word, go back to the start of the video. Remember, I went through what all the words are with you. Feel free to use the pictures here to help give you some ideas. All right, and if you need any more ideas, make sure you ask on our Zoom call. All right, make sure you're working hard. I know you guys can do this assignment, so thanks for giving me your very best effort.